stars and you call them by name the skies grow plain God you reign your glory shines you teach the sun when to bring a new day creation sings you reign, God, you reign, God, you reign, forever and ever, God, you see you welcome you made it you joined us here for our online service at North Modesto Church of God we are so glad that you decided to come alongside us to worship Jesus to sing some songs about him and to him and just to learn a little bit more about him and I have no doubt that Pastor Noberto has a message on his heart that is going to touch your heart and um, I'm just glad that you are here with us I hope that you will join us again for the next week um, 
but we're going to pray right now, uh, and then we're going to get into the rest of our service. All right, pray with me, will you? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence, God. We know that you're always with us, always around us, Jesus. And we just look forward to what you have in store for us, God. I just pray that you would just reveal yourself to each one of us in a new way, God, that we would get to know you better, Father. And uh, we know that you're just doing something within us, God. You're already stirring something else, fa something else up, Father, that we're able to understand you better, God. We're able to um, just connect with you on a different level. So we just ask you to continue to move, guide us, Father. Be with us. Keep us safe. Keep us healthy, Lord. Um, and help us to love others the way that you do. We love you in the name of Jesus. Amen. coronavirus pandemic, many things have been cancelled, like classes at the school, worship service at the church building, trips, events, graduation, weddings, and many other things. 
but there are things that had not been cancelled. Things that really matter still remain and never ever go away that things had not been cancelled, like God's love, God's peace, kindness, His goodness, His faithfulness, His mercy and joy has not been cancelled. The series of messages we are in is called While in Quarantine. While in quarantine, we have a choice. We can sit in fear and complain about it, or we can open the Scripture, the Word of God, to find comforting truth that will guide us through this uncertain time. So far, we have seen, while in quarantine, we can choose to be joyful. True joy originates with God's presence in our life. It is remaining connected to Jesus that we have joy in our life. Like Jesus said in John 15:11, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. Joy is found in a personal relationship with Jesus. Do you want to be joyful? Do you want to have a joyful life? Invite Jesus into your life. While in quarantine, we can choose to be thankful. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Not everything that happens in our life is good, but God has a mysterious and even a miraculous way of using everything and work out for our good. In all circumstances of our life, there are reasons to praise God and to be thankful to Him, and it's always a lesson to learn. Today, I want to challenge you, while in quarantine, we can choose to pray. Prayer is not a therapeutic mantra of positive thinking, as it may be for some people. Prayer is not meditation or passive reflection. Prayer is the communication of the human soul to God who created our soul. Prayer is the primary way for the follower of Jesus Christ to communicate his desire, his request, his will, and his emotion with God and to have fellowship with Him. You can talk to people in many ways. You can pick up the telephone, send an email, write a letter, or even hire a light aircraft and fly a banner across the sky. But if you want to talk to God, you pray. People pray in many different ways. Eyes open, eyes closed, heads up, heads down. Hands together, hands in the air, hands open. And some people have developed even more elaborate methods. Prayer can be about anything. It's about how you feel, the good stuff and the bad stuff. A bit like having a really honest conversation, but with God. But it's like having a conversation. So there's no need to use special words or go to a special place because you can pray anywhere like a sofa, the park, in the office, a church, a supermarket, in bed, the beach, on your own, in a group, or on your own again, or when you're otherwise engaged. And you can pray at any time. And like having a conversation, the better you get to know God, the better it becomes. And the best thing is, God talks back. Sometimes in ways we don't expect, sometimes with answers we don't always understand. But if you think he hasn't heard you, you'd be surprised by what he hears. You'd be surprised by what he knows. Because of this pandemic, many people have returned to the practice of prayer. A recent research study show how people across the United States has been uh, responding to this pandemic. And this study revealed that 55% of the American adults have said that they had prayer for the end of this pandemic. 
even those who have said they seldom or never pray have responded that they have prayer for an end of this pandemic. 6% of self-identifying atheists or agnostic said they have prayed for an end as as well. The challenge this pandemic has raised is too big to handle alone. We need help, and there is a God who has infinite power and a deep love for humankind. Prayer will help us to discover peace in the midst of this uncertain situation, knowing that God is in control of everything. How can we take advantage of this spiritual resource? In Matthew, Jesus offers the pattern, the promise, and the proof that makes prayer a real experience. Please pay attention to Lauren as she reads this Bible text. Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you, then though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Jesus' followers recognized that he, more than anyone else, could teach them how to pray. They were fascinated by his teaching, but the disciples never asked Jesus to teach them how to preach. They sat for hours and listened to him teach, but they never asked him how to teach. But when they saw Jesus praying, they asked, Lord, teach us to pray. The disciples saw the difference and they were impressed. And because they want to improve their prayer life, they ask Jesus to help him. Jesus is the supreme authority in prayer because his whole life was in a spirit of prayer. Jesus knows what prayer can do. In this uncertain time, when we don't know what to do, the best thing we can do is to choose to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Come on, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and you shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down. Come on down, don't you want to go down? Come on, mothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, 
sinners, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Today, I want to challenge you while in quarantine, choose to pray. What prayer pattern does Jesus suggest to us? First, see, he suggests us to ask. It means recognizing all our need and admiring our own helplessness. The true spirit of prayer is found in the word of the tax collector who said in Luke 18 uh, verse 13, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Asking means that we recognize our need. Have mercy on me. Asking means that we are addressing a person. We cannot ask to an object for and wait for an answer. When we pray, we do not address to a thing, but to God who listens and cares for us. Jesus is saying that God is always accessible and available. His ears are open to hear from us and His hands are extended to help us. Also, we must ask specifically, like says in Philippians chapter 4, 6, Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. We must not filter our request before asking God, but like a child we must honestly open our heart to God. He is a good and loving Father who will respond to our request according to what is best for us. Second, Jesus suggests us to search. It conveys the concept or idea of effort in the Lord's Prayer Jesus teaches us to pray for our daily bread. He is not instructing us to sit passively and do nothing. Instead, we are challenged to ask God to give us an opportunity to earn our daily bread. For example, when a farmer says this prayer, it means that he is asking to the opportunity to prepare the land and the seed, to cultivate the crops, and to harvest the fruits. And third, Jesus suggests us to knock. It brings the concept of effort and persistence. Jesus illustrates this point with a story we read in the Gospel of Luke. Please pay attention as Chloe reads this Bible text. Luke 11, 5-10 then he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the other one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him the bread because he is his friend, Yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the door will be opened. With this story, Jesus is encouraging us to always pray and never get discouraged. Even if the lack of understanding, disappointment, or bitterness led us to give up. How long should we continue to pray? Always or until the answer comes. The prayer pattern Jesus suggests us is to ask, search, and continue to knock, to never ever get discouraged in prayer. What does Jesus promise if we pray? The answer we find in Matthew chapter 7, verse 8. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. 
and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. What Jesus promises is that God will always answer our prayer. Maybe he will not answer in the way we want or we wish, but God will always answer in the way what is best for our life. Because only God has perfect love, understanding, and wisdom. Who is this promise for? It is certainly not a blank check written to our person. It is a promise made for Jesus' followers who are sincere enough to keep asking, seeking, and knocking. What evidence Jesus offers that makes prayer a real experience? Jesus uses the analogy of a father who gently responds to his son's request. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 9 to 11 says, Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gift to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gift to those who ask him? If we human beings, who are sinners, wants and delight to answer our kids' request, how much more our Heavenly Father certainly wants to respond to the request we bring Him. The proof that prayer is real and work is found in the God to whom we pray. It is found in His nature, His resources, His wisdom, His power, and his unfailing love. While in quarantine, I want to challenge you to choose to pray. First, determine your needs and your request. Second, in the light of what the scripture teach us, see if your request and your needs are really right. And third, then write your request. When you speak to God in prayer, look for a place where no other thing could distract you. Remember, you are talking to God, nor to a things, neither to other person. Never forget to thank God. And be willing to accept God's response, whatever it may be, remembering that God's will is always the best for our life. Let us pray. God, our Father, thank you for this opportunity we have to come together to worship you. Even if we are not together, we are united in your spirit. Thanks, God, for this spiritual resource you have given us that we can connect with you through prayer. And we ask that we can take advantage of this spiritual resource that we can continue to ask you, that we can continue to seek and knock the door, waiting for your answer. Help us to have confidence and to believe that you will always give us what is best for our life. We ask your blessing that you can look for us and that you can continue to take care of our life. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen.
Enjoy this worship service. If you need something or you know someone who has a need, please let us know by calling to the church office and we will do our best to help you. Don't hesitate to communicate with us. Also, I want to thank especially for your support with your finances. God has been great and you have been faithful and we are thank God for your faithfulness. You can continue to support the church ministry, uh, giving online, visiting our website, or you can mail a check to our church address. I hope you have a great day. Keep safe and always remember, God is in control and you are loved. God bless you. 
Cause